<laughs> Meanwhile, in Meanwhile, while everything's going to hell, India has had some good progress in vaccination. In fact, they administered more COVID-19 vaccine doses than all of the G7 nations put together in August. 180 million vaccine doses administered in the month of August, which is a ton. Now, obviously, it is a very large population. Um, that's, you know, I, I'm bad at math, but you know, somewhere around one tenth of the population less. More, more. Um, so there's still a lot of people to be vaccinated, but it is great progress. And let's show some of these visualizations you're seeing there. 180 million doses compares to uh, 40 million in Japan, just 23 million in the US, where millions of doses are going to waste. How fun is that? Um, all the way down to 5 million in the UK and 3 million in Canada. And um, you can see the, the world comparison here where, where Brazil did a very good job. Remember, Brazil was really struggling. Obviously, they've been hit very hard by the pandemic, but they're doing a good job of vaccinating. And you can see there Indonesia and Mexico as well. So great progress there uh, by India, JR. Uh, yeah, no, and you're talking about the numbers and how big of a population is there, and that's <clears throat> that's the thing. At least maybe this is a, a promising sign. Whatever it is that they used, I was looking for a potential, uh, you know, what is it ramped up the change because it was it was getting chaotic, and probably still is to a degree. To exactly yeah. what is it they need to, to get this done? And and honestly, I like the cartoonish drawing in that first <laughs> slide. Um, it really harkens me back to like kindergarten. Maybe this is what we need, like cartoon drawings of a nice little drawing of a nurse giving someone a shot. And maybe folks will be less uh, concerned about to, uh, getting it done. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's good news uh, for them. Uh, for us though, hey, here's a fun comparison. There were almost 300% more hospitalized COVID-19 patients over Labor Day weekend in the US compared mm. to a year ago. So after we vaccinated millions and millions and millions of people, it's three times worse than a year before. The average number of deaths for this period was 86% higher than the previous year. So not proportionately higher, but still a lot higher than it was a year ago. And look, it's not a mystery as to why when you have so many people being vaccinated, it's because the people who are not vaccinated don't care and aren't participating at all in any measures to stop it. CDC urged unvaccinated people to abstain from traveling over the holiday weekend. Uh, the Transportation Security Administration told CBS News that more than 3.5 million people traveled for Labor Day weekend. And that was for the, the holiday. What do we think that they were all staying at home the weekend before? No, <laughs> people are going around coughing each other's faces in supermarkets. They don't care about any of this. Absolutely, I, I heard Tucker Carlson said that um, uh, for some reason we're claiming that the pandemic is over, as if it's not. So you know, this reasons like this, he's just not following. It, you know, maybe he needs that slope. Maybe he missed this piece of information. That's all. I don't know. Maybe, maybe terrible research, unfortunately, for that team. <laughs> anyway, meanwhile, in Meanwhile, in Afghanistan, bad news, basically. Uh, so they've uh, put together their government. They've announced an all-male caretaker government, despite promises of an inclusive cabinet, including an interior minister wanted by the FBI. So that's that's fun. Um, the Taliban has also brought back the Ministry for Promotion of Virtue and Prevention of Vice, uh, a notorious enforcement body that was one of the most hated institutions when they last controlled Afghanistan. Its main uh, uh, function was to police the Taliban's extreme interpretation of Islamic law. So if you're we're continuing uh, new Taliban watch 2021, um, it's not really working out well. It looks a lot like the Taliban from 1996 to 2001 when they last controlled Afghanistan. So that's fun, JR. Well, I mean, it's expected. I mean, this this is part of what was gonna we knew would go down as you know withdrawal happened and people escaped who all haven't escaped. It's part of the mess and it's part of what we could expect. And uh, you would hope that we start seeing some of these things happen and see it going on and maybe see it as a cautionary tale because again, as you see these 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 laws and these and these policies put in place, man, there's a lot of comparisons. I'm just saying, when we have this policing of certain police have to follow Islamic law in a certain way, we have police chiefs in our country talking about some, thank you and God bless America. We do this for God's way, for God's will. It sounds very similar. So just because it's not the same religion and the same God that we're mentioning, doesn't mean it's not similar. Now, I'm not saying we're the Taliban. But I am saying that we have uh, uh, some tendencies. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely tendencies. Um, and speaking of which, actually, let's let's uh, circle around to something we were just talking about, which is sports. 
A protest in West, or sorry, actually, before we get to that, a protest in Western Herat ended with two dead and four injured. The Guardian saw video of Taliban dispersing protesters with gunfire, so the violence thing is also returning. But in terms of sports, the Taliban have confirmed that women won't be allowed to play cricket or any other sport. The deputy head of the Taliban's Cultural Commission said that sport is not seen as something that is important for women. He said, I don't think women will be allowed to play cricket because it is not necessary that women should play cricket. In cricket, they might face a situation where their face and body will not be covered. Islam does not allow women to be seen like this. It is the media era and there will be photos and videos and then people watch it. Islam and the Islamic Emirate, which they're calling Afghanistan, do not allow women to play cricket or play the kinds of sports where they get exposed. And he went on to say, um, that women are uh, feminizing sports, which are for men, and uh, he won't allow it. And um, you know, he's not going to apologize for it. And uh, yeah, why are you crying? Why are you whining? You're the one that's whining. Anyway, um, he's yeah. going to have a show on Daily Wire soon. Uh, <laughs> head of the Taliban Culture Commission. <laughs> Any thoughts about that? No, as I'm saying, it seems like a radical thing to make those comparisons, but it's okay to look it up and actually try and avoid these types of approaches. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the news, big news Wednesday, hitting you hard. Anyway, J.R. Jackson, as always, thank you for joining us. It would not be big news Wednesday without you. Hey, I'm just waiting for the next one. I'm gonna sit right here until next Wednesday. Okay, we'll have you soon, get get Sprocket ready. Get him some of those 700,000 uh, treats. Anyway, for those of you at home, um, we got Indisputable coming up in just a few minutes. So don't go anywhere and I will be joining Anna Kasparian uh, later on the second hour of the Young Turks. Hope to see you there, but until then, stay safe out there, stay sane out there and I'll see you soon.
what's happening? Welcome, it's indisputable, I'm your host, Rashad Richie, good to be with you. We have a lot on the agenda today. My first story of today, I will break down in just a moment. <laughs> uh, don't forget in the bullpen, we have uh, none other than Hannah Cox. She's been in the bullpen before. Uh, she's going to debate me on mask and COVID vaccine mandates. She is brand ambassador of Fee, FEE -E Online. And breaking down news of the day, we have Dina Dahl, attorney at law, legal and crime analyst. Uh, this is going to be nice. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. First story. Okay. Once again, parents rather throw them hands then throw on a mask. We're talking about another school board meeting that ended in physical violence. No, not with young, immature teenagers, but with old ass middle aged adults. What happened this time in Missouri? Brawl erupts, parents arrested after another school board meeting. According to the report, fist flew after a Missouri school board voted to simply reinstate mask mandates. Why? Because 180, let me say that number again, 180 staff members and students were potentially exposed to COVID-19. Let's show a picture of one of the parents being arrested. That was basically your scene at this school board meeting, okay? The Pleasant Hill School District had 21 confirmed cases of students testing positive for COVID in the first nine days of the new school year. Those numbers are guaranteed to be higher now, KMBC reported. It's part of a nationwide spike in COVID cases among children, which now accounts for 26.8% of all cases in the country. When I first reported on the surge of children Contracting COVID, it was at 20%. It is now headed to 30%. By next week, it may be higher than that. While school officials throughout this country, especially in places like Florida, continue to ignore the reality. While governors continue to ignore the reality. This story gets deeper. Over the last week, there were about 252,000 child cases of COVID. The, le the largest number since the pandemic began, that's according to the American Academy of Pediatrics. To curtail the spread of the, of the Pleasant Hill School District, the school board unanimously, everybody, all of them, not one dissent at all, all of them voted to reinstate mask mandates, sparking shouting matches and tense verbal exchanges during the meeting, what happened beyond the shouting match? Well, they continued to shout even outside. Tempers boiled over after the meeting. And the parking lot turned into a fight night when arguments escalated into physical confrontations. Okay, let me say it like this, all right? The people who are at these school board meetings, they do not represent the majority sentiment of that local community. We now have the data, 70 to 75% of parents are for mask mandates inside of local schools. That is a survey. Those are actual parents that took the time, read the survey and click boom right here, I'm for this. Just because people are loud does not mean they are the majority. What you have happening now, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call a silent majority being outspoken by this minority of loud mouths. So what needs to happen? Those who are for common sense for their children, I need them to take their behinds up to these school board meetings, just like these Trumpites and make their cases known. Let their voices be heard. Because every time we're reporting in the news cycle, we're reporting about parent outrage. But that's not even the true narrative. Parents are not outraged, not the majority of them. They are not outraged by mask mandates. Only these Trump supporters are. That's based on the data. 
Dana Dahl, thoughts? You know, I agree. It's this. It's the small minority, and we see it over and over again in the story stories. There's so much anger there at that. Everybody else can feel very threatened and they know that that's powerful. And school boards actually across the country are having this happen. One, the meetings are easy, accessible, local. Two, like I said before, there are more women than other elected representatives. And so they are being terrorized everywhere for this. And like you said, the majority of parents there actually wanted the masks. I think it's interesting too, because in Missouri, Missouri is one of the few states that there's only one abortion clinic. And the Missouri Health Department actually filed to shut that down in 2019. So, you know, this idea of, um, you know, women's rights to their bodies not kind of being recognized in Missouri. And yet, this group being so upset about just like a cloth mask being put over the kids. Yeah. We know masks work. You know, there was actually now, a, a, we know it worked anecdotally, but there was a, a study coming out of India, the randomized control study proving that it works. So there's not a question here. And we see long COVID in kids. There's not a question on their health. It's really sad that school boards here are being terrorized for doing their job and protecting yeah. children's health. Quite ironic, right? The same people that will say to you a mask mandate is too much government intrusion to their body. But they are completely okay with telling every woman what they can and cannot do with theirs. Quite hypocritical. All right, next story. Will you believe that a black firefighter was told to take his water hose and to hose protesters. He was told this by his boss. This black firefighter said, no, I am not doing that to protesters, okay? For obvious freaking reasons. Well, that firefighter was disciplined for not following the order of his boss. Let's put up a picture of this firefighter. There he is. Now this was during a protest about the George Floyd murder. His name is Omar Wilkes. Omar Wilkes filed a lawsuit. The 13 page Brooklyn federal court filing details the alleged retaliation against FDNY veteran Omar Wilkes. After the May 2020 confrontation with his boss and the firefighters continued outspokenness over racism in the department. These defendants sought to muzzle the plaintiff and inhibit his speech, the court papers charged. They also retaliated against him for his speech and worked collectively to manufacture false claims against the plaintiff. It gets even deeper. This guy is an ordained minister. He is con considered to be a stand up person in his community. And when his boss told him to use the water hose in order to spray po protesters, he said, I, I just can't do that. All right. Uh, the 41 year old Wilkes, an eight year fire veteran, was also an ordained minister, claimed that his supervisor instructed him and other firefighters to assist in controlling protesters by using the fire trucks water hoses. Wilkes objected and insisted that such an order not be followed, good for him. The lawsuit said no fire hoses were used on protesters in the city, but noted no disciplinary action was taken against the official who allegedly called for their use. Now think about this, okay? This is a protest about racism, about authority misusing and abusing their power. This is about systemic oppression. This is about historic and current systemic oppression. And you're telling me that a supervisor at a fire department said, use that water hose. Bringing back all of the memories of the 60s and beyond. Creating an optic that would have been damning to that city and damning to that department if this brother would have followed through. He has saved this city. He saved that city money. He saved that city a horrible public relations nightmare. He saved that city. He stood up for what was right. But what happened to him? Hmm? 
the culture that he's in did not stand up for him. According to Wilk Suit, he also complained to Department Brass about the marginalization of black firefighters and the lack of diversity in the ranks. You don't say. Only to receive a summons to meet fire officials angered by his comments. What happened to this brother? What did they do to him? Because he refused to turn a water hose on protesters. They suspended him for 30 days. Wilkes was suspended for 30 days after protesting outside the headquarters and then reassigned to a post where he could no longer collect overtime pay in addition to losing his income during his forced time off. The defendants also forced him to undergo counseling before his return to what's called a light duty assignment according to court documents. This is what happens when you stand up for yourself and for others and you do what's right inside of a culture that is hell bent on doing what they want to do. Dina Dahl, does he have a case here? He has quite a good case. Um, you know, if he can prove these allegations, this is kind of exactly the reason why for free speech is protected with employees. If, if he worked at a private company, that would be one thing. But he's a state employee, which means he has First Amendment protection. And in order to show that he had his speech protected, the you know he would have to say that he was speaking about a matter of public concern, which mm-hmm. obviously this is. And the reason why we want to protect his speech is because government employees see things that the rest of us don't. So this is exactly the example where they like want to protect the speech because he raised the attention of like this was happening in the department. The rest of us aren't going to know that we don't have that kind of access. In order to overcome the suit, the um, the New York Fire Department would have to show that somehow his speech was making an inefficient workplace and somehow it harmed the integrity of the workplace. That is going to be a very hard thing for them to show that somehow him speaking out against like you said, this protest which meant so much and doing something such a harmful thing would somehow hurt their integrity. That's going to be hard for them to show. So yeah, if he can show, um, you know, prove these allegations, I think he has quite a strong case. Very well said. Let me take you to Lowndes County, Georgia. Uh, there's a video that has gone viral. Let me just go to the video. Yeah, bigotry and bullying combined. Let me give you some background to this. Uh, This was in Valdosta, Georgia. Uh, This is a hate crime being committed against an LGBTQ student over a $5 dare. That's what this was about. Uh, The video was shared on Twitter under the username Jose, who claimed to be a former student at Lowndes County High School and shows a student Jose identifies as Andrew running up to another student sitting at a lunch table with a pride flag wrapped around them. The sheriff of Lowndes County, Ashley Park, confirmed that the suspect has been charged with disorderly conduct, simple battery and disruption of a public facility. The state's Department of Juvenile Justice is now overseeing the case. Now. Uh, This is a kid, these are all children. So let me make sure I put that in its proper context. So when I highlight stories like this, I want you to remember that I'm really talking about the parents. You see, the kid who decided to act in this way against a fellow classmate learned this behavior from somewhere, all right? So now the juvenile justice system is involved, there is a fine. Uh, way more than the $5 that he earned in this ridiculous dare. Uh, And naturally, you have a school system, a school system taking sides about what happened. Um, This is not the first time, if you've heard of Lowndes County before, it's because they were actually in national news for something else. In 2013, the body of Kendrick Johnson was found in in a gym mat inside of their school. Let's put up a picture of Kendrick and his mother. I actually had a conversation with Kendrick's mom not too long ago. 
If you remember this story, it was so, so extreme. They found his dead body inside of this gym mat and they claimed he killed himself. And there were so many missteps by the coroner, by the sheriff, by the funeral home, by the investigation, the video evidence, the suspects being connected to other members of law enforcement. It was insane. A state autopsy initially ruled the 17 year old's death accidental. And a federal review of the case ended in 2016 when the Department of Justice announced that it had not found sufficient evidence to support federal criminal charges. The Johnson family has maintained their son died of foul play and have filed multiple lawsuits against dozens of defendants over the years. And another autopsy that was paid for by the family said no, this was not intentional. This was not accidental, somebody did this to that kid. They found signs of blunt force trauma to his head. That case is still open out of that same high school, same exact high school. All right, Dina, your thoughts. Well, I'm glad the sheriff did file charges here. And you know, she also reopened the case for to investigate Kendrick Johnson. Yeah. So, you know, this is good because there is a problem here and the criminal justice system needs to at least address it criminally. But, you know, obviously the school needs to do something. Like I've said before, you've got a captive audience in students. Once they once they graduate, you know, that's it. And schools, starting with elementary school, can do a lot more to kind of combat what you what you're saying, how they're raised, most likely in their homes, and honestly, what they're seeing their parents do to school board members, right? So you know, we can do a lot more while they're still in school because, you know, the the boy who did it got criminally charged, but the girl who sat there laughing did it because that's not a crime. Right. But that's wrong and we need to address all of the kids who help encourage that. Yeah, and, and I'm reminded that during the Kendrick Johnson case, there was extreme racial tension inside of that school. Uh, bigotry, racism, all of that seems to be permeating still to this day, even after a tragedy like that inside of a school system. All right, we have more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. I'm back to gaslighting. Didn't you and I talk about gaslighting on old school? Probably. That yeah. boss gaslit all his female employees. People who manipulate others like that make you feel like you're the weirdo. Why won't you punch yourself in the face? What is wrong with you? And you're like, oh my God, I feel so bad. Why didn't I just punch myself in the face and poke my eye out? Now I'm 47 and I just figured that out like earlier this year. You figured out somebody was doing it to you or that you were that it doing- was a phenom- That it would have been happening my whole life and I didn't realize it. Right, right. Welcome to Indisputable, I'm your host, Dr. Rashad Richard. We got a lot happening today, but what do we do on this show? We tell the truth, you know why we tell the truth? Because the truth is simply indisputable. Rashad, great to be here, congratulations on the new show. And I gotta let everybody know that Rashad and I go way back. Here's the pattern that we see in all of these Karen stories. They think they own stuff they do not own. Now, where does that come from? I don't know, maybe slavery. Maybe they think they should still own black people. This is what happens when Karen's weaponized the police. When you're used to privilege, equality seems like oppression. It hits you in a certain way when someone is holding you against your will, treating you like you're a criminal and you're an innocent person. This is something that black people face no matter where they are. A stronger black economy lends itself to a stronger, greater economy. Don't think it's exclusive of you, it's inclusive of you. What's your beef with critical race theory? It adds more fuel to the fire of the racist tendencies that we already have. We have a generation of problems problem solvers that can remedy the problem if they are properly taught what the problem is. You know who created redlining in this country? Mm-hmm. The white liberal. I, I, don't, I don't give a damn who created it. If it's a uh, racist uh, policy, uh, racist uh, policy, uh, Shelly. Here's what, what I don't know. I don't know. See, there you go filibustering, brother. You're scared of this truth, but you're gonna get it though. Hi, 
I've been a fan of TYT, I believe, for the last six years. Five years. Three years now. Seven years. Four years now. Two and a half years. I just started because she got me into it. <laughs> My boyfriend actually watches it every morning and every night, so I kind of just started watching it with him and... I love it. I mean, it's the only way that I find my news. Looking through YouTube, looking for, like, um, you know, political shows that look cool. I came across a very angry uh, rant from Jenk, and that's when, that's when I knew. So I was immediately in love with the show. And then I had, like, had to miss a live show since then. <laughs> Ten times a day, I watched the show in the morning. Whenever I had a bad day at high school, Young Turks. Man, Jenk is just so blunt and honest, and I love the honesty, and there's no BS behind the news, and they just tell everything like it is. There's nobody censoring them. There's nobody there to say, you can't do this, you can't say that. The feel of authenticity makes it seem like what they're saying is true. I feel like I get the real story from the Young Turks. I am TYT. 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 Welcome to the Damage Report. I'm John Iderola. This is gonna be a big one. Meanwhile, in the Arctic, you know where this is going. <laughs> you watch the Damage Report. The Arctic's on fire. Obviously, why would we be talking about the Arctic except to tell you that it's melting once again? The Republicans aren't that interested in it. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. Lift out of poverty up to 3.7 million people, including an estimated 1.3 million children. Hashtag Save the Children. Eh, not if it costs money. I mean, Absolutely. come on. All right, welcome back. Let me read some of these amazing comments and then we'll get back to the show. Always good to have every single one of you here. Uh, remember, if you're watching right now from the Damage Reports YouTube channel, I need you to come over and subscribe to Indisputable TYT on YouTube because as of September 13th, which is Monday, we will no longer broadcast on my big homie John's YouTube page. Thank you. Thank you, John and everybody at TDR for giving us this amazing lead in. So make sure you do that. Now we're at what 196,000 subscribers. Uh, we can be at 200,000 today, really. <laughs> we can make that happen, all right? If you already subscribed, make sure you tell at least five friends to subscribe to the page. Um, also, you know what it is, never miss I wish a Karen would, never miss the bullpen, you have it all right there. Um, also, watch the conversation live today, 5.30 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time. Uh, that's right before the Young Turks. You can also go to tyt.com slash live. Um, Jank talks to radio host uh, Tom Hartman. Tom been in the game a long time, by the way. Tom been in the game a long time. Um, but talks about Tom Hartman, about racist, uh, the racist history of American healthcare. Uh, should be an amazing, an amazing conversation. Also. Make sure to subscribe there as well on YouTube, youtube.com slash TYT conversation, okay? Make that happen. Let's go to these comments on Kelly on it today, TYT member Kelly O'Hara, my poet says, so many conservatives acting strong for their side until you challenge their ideas, then they run and hide. Their cheeks go flush, their brains all melt as they begin to swelter. I need to get their asses, excuse me. They need to get their asses on this show. I see you, Larry Elder. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag cold feet Larry. We, that's what we need to do. Ladies and gentlemen, all of my indisputables, I want you to tag Larry Elder and troll him. Tell him I sent you. <laughs> and I want you to hashtag cold feet Larry in your trolling comments, okay? Listen. Nine times out of 10, I would say trolling is bad. But this is the one time out of 10 where it's righteous, okay? All right, 
Mary Bryan says there are 30 kids in one of my grandson's classes. They are almost, they are mostly vaccinated and do wear masks, but our schools are so old, there is no room for social distancing. We are waiting for the cases to show up. They have been in the school for a week. Uh, Mary and Brian, I'm, I'm hoping that does not adversely impact your little one, okay? Uh, Mickey C, the silver haired dragon, hosing protesters, question mark. I can still vividly remember watching cops turning fire hoses on blacks who wanted to vote. Watched on our little black and white TV as they send dogs to attack them. I was too young to fully understand, but the visual will always be with me even over 60 years later. Thank you for, for, for putting it that way because the black firefighter who said no, do not follow that order. Saved not only that city, but it saved people like yourself from being re-traumatized by that imagery again. Our YouTube super chat, Peter Hamby. Real parents protect and take care of their children. These people are not real parents if they want to infect COVID in their homes. Yeah. Aaron Okinos, the water pressure can be so high it can break bones depending on angle and distance. It can. Uh, Nicole Purple, that guy deserves a medal, not a suspension. Exactly. The people that we should celebrate inside of these industries are often the people that they do not. Okay. Um, Jim Garcia, five dollar dare get you five days in jail. <laughs> it's almost dead, right? Bup Dragon. And think of how many, and this is on Twitch, think of how many gay teachers were harassed and fired because of people saying they were gonna give their kids HIV. And remember that that was a sentiment, yep. Um, Tool man underscore Tim 51. Since when is it a firefighter's job to control protesters? You, I mean, yeah, you know, you think that they are there in case a fire happens, right? Or maybe an emergency where you need to do CPR. I, I get it, I understand, I had the same question. Auntie Faye, it's so painful to see that girl just sitting and laughing while it is happening too. And you know what that girl represents who was sitting there and laughing? Culture, culture. I don't care what your rules say at your school. I don't care what your protocol may be. If your culture is adversarial to your rules, culture will eat your rules alive every day. All right, next story. This should actually be a crime, this person should be held criminally responsible. There's a superintendent of schools who has decided to ignore all COVID-19 mandates, restrictions, protocols, everything. Let me take you to Jackson, Mississippi. Let's just go to the video first. I'm confident what we're doing. And you know what? We meet every evening, I can make a change at any moment. And I will make a change. If I see it's necessary. Superintendent John Stryker's COVID-19 plan at schools in Jackson County, Mississippi. Masks, vaccines, and quarantines are voluntary. He says he's chosen quality education over pandemic fear. We lost a teacher to COVID and it broke our heart. I wept, okay? It's very hard on me, but when I'm making my decisions, I need to do the best I can as a leader to make non-emotional decisions. But your non-emotional decision is to do nothing. Right, you know, that seems a little weird. I'm using the data, you know, and and, and so, um, you know, I feel that uh, I feel our kids are safe relative to the other schools with those options. There are around 9,000 students in the Jackson County School District. School started August 5th, and the latest complete report from the district shows an astonishing 6.4 percent of students have COVID. Stryker says the latest numbers are trending down slightly. Okay, um, Dr. John Stryker will allow kids who are COVID positive to still go to school, not wear a mask, no mandate of social distancing, nothing. He is ignoring all COVID protocol. Who allows a COVID positive child to come to school with absolutely no protocol required whatsoever? He does. This guy, now let me tell you why I'm outraged by this. Um, put up a picture of this clown. Let me tell you why I'm outraged by this guy. Uh, well educated, but has no walking around sense. 
That's what my grandmother would say. The rate of COVID positives for his children under his direction, under his authority is over 6%. That number may have increased since the report. Now I wanna contrast that to another district actually utilizing common sense COVID. Now remember, his is over 6%. Here's another, let's go to the second video. If a school district does not have a mandatory masking policy and is not quarantining thousands of people by the second week of school, then that school district is very likely being irresponsible as it relates to quarantine and exposure of people at school. Okay, there's this contrast, all right? If you follow the protocols, what we have seen in places all over the country is a COVID positive rate of children of less than 1%. The rate is less than 1%. This cat is damn near hitting 7% and already there's a teacher that has died. And according to him, he wept. Oh, oh, he wept, but as a leader, he has to make these decisions. Um, this is extreme, um, should be criminal. Uh, the Delta variant is impacting our young people like never before. But here you have it, you have your school leadership. Let me tell you the irony inside of this. You do know if you have the flu, that same school district will send you home. But if you have COVID, they will not. Dina? Why is this not criminal? You know, it might be actually. The former governor of Michigan, Michigan Snyder, is actually on trial for a criminal misdemeanor for his neglect of the flood crisis. So to me, this seems awfully similar. Are they doing enough contact tracing to be able to prove it in a court of law? You know, that's unclear. But also, I think he, civilly he could be uh, neglect too. His one statement there is so full is uh, was so full of lies that no data and that his students were relatively safer. Those both could be disproved in a court of law. This is when I like the court of law because it, you can't just say anything; you have to prove it and. A family could very easily prove the opposite. Like you said, his school is way worse off than other schools that use masks. And two, there's a ton of data, CDC advisory, that could be also proved. So I don't know if enough contract tracing is done, but if there are and somebody dies as a result of this, I think he could be either criminally or civilly. The problem is, is that I don't know if they're collecting enough data for them to be able to use it in court. Really interesting. Let me go to my next story. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a and Sunday? You're, you're I feel right. Back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. <laughs> That's a. Um, excuse me? Excuse me. <laughs> I'm coming through. <laughs> <laughs> She's so cute. She's coughing at me. She's coughing at me. No, look at you guys. You're so cute. You're such a Karen. Okay, whatever. You're such a sheep. Why don't you have a mask on? Because I don't need to have one on. I'm not sick and neither are you. Okay, but you don't have to be coughing at me. You don't know who's sick or not. It's my allergies. You don't know who's sick or not by looking at you. Oh, you got, yeah. And so. Two years ago, before anybody started talk, talking about COVID, you were okay with that, though, going out not knowing you were sick, right? You don't know anything right? about my health. I don't. Yeah, she's coughing she's at me. Her. I have my allergies, and she got all freaked no, out because I'm coughing. No, she don't. No, she's coughing. Well, how do you know? You don't know, and she just said, I don't know anything about her health. We don't know you don't know anything about my health. I actually, I, maybe I have a medical. Okay, everybody. Please, I don't need to wear a mask. Okay, bye. Okay, here's when keeping the Karen goes wrong. The Karenicity runs deep in this one. So we know who this person is. Let me give you some background. A Karen in Nebraska 
was caught coughing at a supermarket while firmly refusing to mask up. This was on September 7th, a Twitter user posted a TikTok video showing a woman smiling as she continues to cough in the store despite being asked to stop by other customers. The video identified the woman as Janine Hoskovec, who is now receiving a lot of backlash. Now, who is Janine? According to her LinkedIn profile, Janine is a resident of Lincoln, Nebraska, works at IT giant SAP, according to her LinkedIn profile. Her profile lists her place of work as Temple, Arizona, but the footage was captured at a Super Saver in Lincoln, Nebraska. She has also previously worked, according to the profile, at NASA and IBM, as well as HP. That's based on the profile. Uh, the profile says that she studied at the United States Air Force Academy, as well as Arizona State University and the University of Colorado. For well, all of that study and all of those degrees did not stop her Karenicity from getting the best of her. Dina Dahl, we know of a case that I reported on on my show where a woman coughed on produce and basically got a 10 year sentence. Most of that parole, but some of that behind bars. Is this illegal what this woman was doing here? You know, I know that was the weapons of mass destruction. Right. Her saliva was one. This is a little bit harder because she's coughing, she's not spitting. If they even brought charges against her for this, though, even if they wouldn't stick, wow, mm. that would be a real deterrent for something like this. But I don't think that this probably rises to the level of criminality. Probably where she's going to get it is for her private employer. If her private employer doesn't decide to fire her as a result of this. If she ever gets another job and that employer Googles her, I think they're gonna certainly question whether or not they want her to represent them out in the public world. Cuz yeah. she's clearly the aggressor in this situation. Whether or not she wants to wear a mask, she's really um, you know, infringing on other people's right to peacefully shop. Whether or not that rises to any sort of actual criminal legality, there's definitely like an ethical and moral like participant we have in the public sphere, and she violates that for sure. Yeah, and it seems like based on her work history profile, uh, she would have a job where there's a morals clause, uh, and if you do things like this, well, that may be uh, an in fact violation of that morality clause. We have more on the other side, it's indisputable, stick and stay. I'll predict right here for you, Chris. I think Donald Trump will leave office before his term is up. He'll be humiliated, embarrassed, and I know him. He's not gonna wanna That's, lose and he's gonna run you for the You got hills. that bet all day long. Okay, let's get after it. Now, um, so look, Jake has made some good <laughs> predictions, and you know, this is most, this is in good fun. I could not disagree more. There's um, no bromance between the two of them. You got that bet all day <laughs> long, Janky, you. <laughs> oh, you know, you stop. In the meantime, <laughs> let's call him out on the day. No, no, but I. I just got a Roku set, uh, little basically a little bit of channel surfing, and I was like, there we are, yeah. there we are. And then I turned it on, and it was John and Brett on Damage Report making fun of me. Oh no. <laughs> so you are so busted. I even took a picture of it, okay? <laughs> They're talking about my predictions. <laughs> I got a new prediction for you, John Idola. <laughs> You're doing a show that's blowing the doors off everybody. Young Turks is the largest online news network, not a big deal. We're gonna rock the boat. We're gonna be counter establishment. We're gonna tell people the truth to the best of our abilities. We're so sick of this corruption. We're not the robots on TV. I actually care about the news. Guilty, guilty, I care. Fourth day on Occupy Wall Street. Last night we launched Wolf Pack. It's us pushing our ideas out there, trying to help the country in every way that we can, trying to make this place just a little bit better. Reporting from the Hillary Bernie debate, I gotta be honest, you know what we do, we cover it for real. For us, this system isn't working. Free, free, free and fair, and fair. Election. election. And when he told the cops that day, when they came to drag her away, 
And he said, if you're going to chain her, you're going to chain me. If you're going to arrest her, you're going to arrest me. Hi, I'm Bartholomew Joseph Kyle. I do audio for the main show, The Young Turks. I also do audio for Post Game. I started in 2006. I met Cenk Uger at the Iraq for Sale screening that was directed by uh, Robert Greenwald. And watching that, I want to figure out a way to be part of something that's genuine and authentic. All right, good to be back. We have a lot of comments. Before I get to those comments, let me remind you if you are watching Indisputable right now on the Damage Report, uh, the Damage Report's YouTube page, make sure you join us right now. Subscribe to Indisputable TYT on YouTube because September 13th, last live stream on TDR, okay? Um, real simple, real easy. YouTube.com in slash indisputable TYT. Also, don't forget to watch the conversation live today, 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 2.30 p.m. Pacific Time at TYT.com forward slash live. That's before the Young Turks. Um, Jang talks to radio host Tom Hartman about the racist history of American healthcare. That is going to be an amazing conversation, okay? Make sure you do not miss that. Um, also, subscribe. For all of those amazing interviews at youtube.com forward slash TYT conversation. All right, let me go to some of these comments. TYT member Eric the Red says, I'm using the data. Doesn't mean anything when you're using them to do nothing about a deadly pandemic. <laughs> That's right, literally, I'm using the data to do absolutely not a damn thing. Jackson, Mississippi, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, um, Mickey C, the silver hair dragon. By the time a child is four or five, they've learned to cover their mouths when they call. And younger than that. Allergies? Question mark. I have allergies. And a dry hacking cough isn't what I get. When I cough, it sounds like I'm bringing up last night's dinner. <laughs> She's so full of it. Childishly faking a cough just to be spiteful. She's pathetic. And really, you know, you're too old for that, Karen. You're too old for that. But what's wrong with you? If you work for me, I would simply question your judgment about everything. Everything Brenda has told me about you in the office is now true. Okay. Uh, YouTube super chat. Uh, Nana Nikki, my local school school district has implemented mask wearing as a part of dress code. Clever. Um, however, it's not enforced. We're losing three to five people to COVID weekly in Lamar County, Texas. We're less than 32% fully vaccinated here. I'm so sorry, that's the reality. Um, I say this often, infraction is only as powerful as enforcement. 
So you have one rule on the books, you have another rule in your culture of that local school system. Um, I hope things get better. Linda M. He would be weeping even more if that teacher's family sued him personally for negligence. And that may be a good start. Um, it can be says they should make anti Karen spray. Oh, don't get the TYT shop people thinking, okay? TYT anti Karen spray? You may be onto something. Um, fascist killer says, as superintendent, where I'm from is against the governor's mask mandate. These people would be jailed. Wow. Two man underscore 1051. Uh, does he have children in the school? I highly doubt it. Okay. Uh, glitteriest dreadhead. <laughs> Just get your cantaloupe and leave the store, Karen. I know. <laughs> right. Uh, Genocide 2002 says, well, now she can add bioterrorism to her resume. <laughs> That will be the perfect cherry on top for her, right? Okay. A wannabe man of God approached young ladies at a beach to evangelize to them that they had on the wrong bikini at the beach. Here it is. Why do you dress this way? Women, so please leave us alone. <laughs> well, kindly. Well, well, take take young. I'm at the beach in take, my bathing take, suit. Yeah, that's that's a thong and that's a bra. That is a bathing take suit. Take young sir. eyes into consideration. They don't need to see pornography right in front of We're not coming up to you, bothering you. Please go away. You're flaunting your stuff. I'm not flaunting anything. Don't look at me. How, how, you look around and, and you're the only thing that sticks out because your whole body. Okay, well, silly. why are you looking at me? But here's the thing: there's okay. free will in America. There's no, freedom bro, of speech. You don't want to look at and if, and, if, and if men of God don't stand up, then our society is gonna go go down the drain because there's no morality. I'm atheist. Sorry. Yeah, same. You're, you're, okay, that, 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 that's if you're an atheist, that doesn't mean you have to, you know, show your body off. You can still put clothes on. Oh, I can't with you. I'm speaking truth. Your body will never ever satisfy. Please. The physical will never ever satisfy. There's a longing in each of your hearts to actually be seen. The reason why, the reason why you're showing your body because you're like. Am I pretty enough? Oh, We're definitely pretty so enough. Thank you. <laughs> hey, I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yes, please leave us just, alone. Just next time you come to a beach and there's young eyes, take that into consideration. Because, what are you because, talking about? Because you're shirtless. You're not saying. Yeah, what are you talking about? You're going to go follow that man now? Yeah, go. Move along. That's a lot different. No, how, is, how is that different? Because he has a. He said, that's a thong, that's a bra. Well, I'm glad you know uh, what bikinis are made of, um, sir. Now remember, he approached them. Now wait a minute, let me get this right. This dude walks up to these ladies. Let's put up a picture of the ladies he walked up to. He walked up to those ladies. And he started talking about what they are wearing at a beach. It's a freaking beach. Now, he claims to be a man of God. And he was only trying to evangelize to these women because he knows the word, he knows the Bible. It was really interesting because later in the video, these young ladies actually quoted the Bible to him and quoted it accurately. Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. For the same measure you use to judge one, that measure shall be used to judge you. You see, Christians like this, these evangelical types, they have convenient amnesia as it relates to scripture. Um, this went back and forth for a minute. Uh, again, this was unprovoked by these young women. They were simply at the beach enjoying themselves among their friends, uh, but we did find out who this guy is, okay? Um, the TikTok user uh, Mia recorded the incident and shared it on Monday night. The morning in a follow up, Mia and a friend explained a bit more about what happened with this unsolicited public sharing. They also shared the identity of the man in the photo. Um, and here's a picture of him, his name is Logan Dorn. Um, Logan Dorn, now after the initial Two videos were posted, Logan posted 
his own side of the story. Y'all, when I tell you this is funny as hell, here it is. What do you consider a bathing suit? A one so my side of the story is I was at um, a reservoir or a lake, and I was with family members. Um, somebody in my family said, hey, we've got to move. There's some college-age women here that are showing too much, um, and I don't want you know my son or, or my daughters to see these things. And so right then and there, I just had a uh, just a righteous anger come over me, a boldness by the Holy Spirit to go in to confront these ladies and to speak truth that, hey, what you're wearing is not okay for a nine-year-old boy or a six-year-old boy. Um, and reason being is because coming from being introduced to pornography at a young age, it destroyed me. I, I don't, I'm not going to apologize. I'm just going to say I'm going to continue to stand on the truth. I'm going to continue to stand on the word of God. Our society is on such a downcline of morality. Pornography and lust is at an all-time high. People, um, you know, don't even know their gender anymore. It, it says uh, plainly in Scripture that the that <clears throat> that the truth the truth will set them free. Not acceptance, uh, not compliments. But man, God loves you, but man, you can't find your worth in your body. There's a longing deep in your soul that only Jesus can satisfy. Logan, I got something for you, Logan, if you can handle the truth. You did say the truth should set you free. Logan, you're a dumbass, okay? Now, the sooner you accept this, the sooner you acknowledge it, the sooner you can move on from this dumbass situation that your dumbass put yourself in. Logan, also, I have another question for you. Maybe you can do another live on your social media. When you say that they need to have the love of Jesus, are you talking about white Jesus or the radical Messiah of color? Which one are you referring to? And, and here's my last question for your self righteous self Did you vote for Donald Trump? Now, that's all I need to know. All right, get back at me on the live. You can always follow me on social media at Rashad underscore Richie, okay? You can make that happen real quick. Um, this was extreme, this was funny. Uh, he basically blamed God for becoming a clown um, at this location. Dina Dahl, why did he bother these young ladies not bothering him? Oh gosh, there's so much I could say about this. First, let's remind everybody that this guy in Texas is gonna be the one who's gonna sue his neighbor or you know, mm. somebody he knows yep. because all of a sudden it's his business what that woman does after six weeks. So let's make that yep. really clear. That's what's happening there. And I'm tired of people using God to do really bad things to other people. That's the second thing. The third thing is that, you know, that his uh, fiance who comes up in a bathing suit and also you know moralizes against these women if she visited certain countries in this world she would be considered naked yep. so it's all relative right and i hope he doesn't show up to a beach in europe because then he's going to also <laughs> think he's a boy conservative so i have a lot to say about these people my final point about this guy is um, school dress codes you know, I think that's where he learned that it was okay for people to tell women how to be dressed. There's a principal in our local school who said, we don't use dress codes because we don't believe in shaming women's bodies. It's up to men, to boys to pay attention to their own class regardless of women wear. So let's get rid of school dress codes, <laughs> the whole idea that a spaghetti strap, a, um, a shoulder scandalous. We're teaching men like this, that they're allowed to go out and tell women what to wear. Just imagine how he is at home. If he's like that with strangers, right? He, he doesn't know these young ladies. Yeah. Imagine what he does at home, all right? I'll leave it at that. Um, okay, there's a Florida town, virtually everybody who's a firefighter has COVID. They really don't have a firefighting force because almost everyone has COVID-19 in Florida where DeSantis is the governor. The place that has the worst COVID situation in America. Let me take you to a very sad situation where 75% of firefighters in this particular department they do not have um, they do not have firefighters. 75% are out, not working. Officials in Lake City said they do not know whether their fire chief, Randy Burnham, who died Sunday after battling the virus for several weeks was vaccinated. Let's put up 
a picture of the dearly departed. All right, very unfortunate. He passed away. He was their leader, okay? A fire department lieutenant in Lake City, 60 miles west of Jacksonville, is also currently hospitalized with COVID-19 and on a ventilator. Austin Thomas, a driver engineer with the department said that August was a rough month for the 21 man fire station. At one time, 75% of its employees either tested positive with the virus or they're in quarantine. Only 33% of residents in Columbia County where Lake City is situated have been vaccinated. A direct correlation between unvaccinated and people contracting and also dying of COVID-19. Remember, they are in Florida, okay? Um, this is extreme police firefighters and other first responders are among those most hesitant to get the vaccine and their cases continue to grow. No national statistics show the vaccination rate for America's entire population of first responders, but individual police and fire departments across the country report figures far below the national rate of 74% of adults and have had at least one dose according to the narrative. Um, I, I don't know what to say about something like this other than follow the science, get rid of the politics and be true to the families that you all support. The, the people who are dying here are connected to families that depend on them, people that love them, responsibilities in their community. It's not a vacuum, it's not a silo. Uh, Dina Dahl, 75% can't even respond to fires. Exactly. And you know, this is why we end up having mandates because they can't just do the right thing when it's so obvious. And they're going to probably eventually have to have a mandate with fire departments, police departments, you know, other first responders, just like how hospitals have to mandate vaccines because these are essential services. And we can't have it where 75% can't respond to a 911 call. That becomes a public emergency. So, you know, we, you know, people who don't like the government to tell them what to do, this is a perfect example of personal, you know, decision making not being right and ultimately affecting the public. That's right. There's a cause and effect relationship with all of it. Always a pleasure having you on the show. Tell people how they can follow you. They can follow me on Ask Dina Dahl, Twitter One. Thanks for having me. It's great. Always. All right, we got more. The bullpen is next. Stick and stay. You know, old school's pitched to me from Jake. It'll just be me, you, Jesus, Ben, and maybe Michael. And we're like, okay, cool. I can do that every week. As you can that see, <laughs> me, Jesus, Ben. <laughs> when you make the order, it says, you know, don't exceed $20 and one cent. So I'll just order literally anything to get it as close to that as I possibly can. I'm sorry that I ordered $45 worth of food <laughs> and got an email saying, sir, would you like to rethink that? And I, what are you talking about? I was in hell. I was just like, oh my God, the theater's empty, nobody's here. Everyone on screen keeps cursing. Why did I let this happen? And the whole thing looks like it was shot through a glass of milk. My mom's gonna be so mad. If you're looking for a heart attack, the short way, baby. Wrong, I did put mayonnaise on it. I'm the yeah. most in shape, overweight person you'll find. That's right. He was like, why didn't you answer my call? I called you 39 times. Yuck. But what makes you stop right before 40? You know, what makes you say, so that's wrong nah, number. man, I doing that no more. <laughs> I'm cool. And I called you back on the air. And I was like, okay, Kevin Smith, big shot. What the f you said you'd come on and you didn't come on. I'm sure I took that very well. <laughs> yeah, you did. You called me back the next day and said, I thought it was 7 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> And there's now deep fake porn. I don't know if you guys have heard of this. I've heard of it. I just had some in the car. I'll tell you who I'm not f***ing, <laughs> Ben Mankiewicz. Three. Have you guys ever felt that? Not ever. And now it's just the three of us. This is the intimate hour. By the way, the last half hour of this, we're not even rolling. <laughs> Fair enough. Hey, man. Easily. Uh, see, I watch movies. I'm done with both of you. Okay. <laughs> Once Greg starts laughing, I can't stop. And I was just going to ask you about getting high, snoogans. Snoochie Boochies. And members, of course, you can get the whole damn thing. TYT.com, join and free trial. I'm old school with the old folks. Good John, night. come back! Do you ready for me? Do you ready? Ah! <laughs> 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 you go here? Oh, 
time to switch the gears. It's oh, man. Oh, God. Do your best. He's a little like Connor. Oh. Oh, no one's happy now. Give him another try. Oh, wow. This is the weirdest game. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brett. I would like to refer to this segment as the Do I Still Have This Talent show. So I want to see if I can play harmonica without my hands. I don't know why I have that. Nothing's gonna be more impressive than that. <laughs> I can also spin a basketball on my finger. While drinking. While drinking. I'm gonna spin a basketball on my finger while drinking apple juice. You can do this, dude. It's also flat. I don't know if that helps or hurts. And it seems to be somewhat wobbly. Ta-da! Nope, I don't know how to do this one. This one's a fail. Nope. Oh God, I'm so mad. All right, welcome back. Let me go to these comments. Um, TYT member Textan says, maybe Creeper Pastor should listen to his wife more. She had the right idea when she wanted to move. If it bothers you, move. Oh, and keep your evangelizing to yourself. Okay. Um, Omega Shinron Dragon, YouTube Super Chat. Thou should have stayeth. His steed away from shores. <laughs> that was nice. I like that. Can you turn it up? All right. Uh, Jerry Williams. Pornography, a pornography didn't destroy this guy. His lack of self discipline did. I mean, he blames everybody for his problems, right? Uh, Feral Dragon. Uh, my rescue is having to rehome pets from a family that lost three that lost three last week. Wow, only disabled. Vax grandma survived. Sad. So sad. Um, Avenger Dragon 89. Nudity is not a sin. Looking is not a sin. Lust is a sin. Okay. Tool man underscore 1051. And before I go to Tool Man, I want to remind everyone that Pat Roberts and others, they said in reference to the nude pics of Donald Trump's wife, that it was just beautiful, the natural body. Don't forget that, okay? All right, uh, two man underscore 1051. 
And if the survive COVID, they will, if they survive COVID, they will probably get long term breathing issues. And for a firefighter, that can be a career, that can be career ending. And that is true. It can be, unfortunately. 75% of the firefighters cannot fight fires in that city. Unbelievable. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. In the bullpen today, we have Hannah Cox, returning guest, brand ambassador Fee Online, F E E Online, host of Base and fellow AFB, Virginia. Good to have you on the show again. How are you? Good to be back with you, Dr. Richie. So, we're going to talk about mask mandates, vaccine protocols, etc. And I don't want to presume what you know or believe about the mask mandate conversation or the protocols for COVID 19. So, give me your sentiment. What are your thoughts about? What's happening out here? Well, it's great to be back with you because I think yet again, we can start this conversation from a place of a green. We don't want people to die. We want people to be able to live healthy lives. But I have major problems with not just mask mandates, but a lot of what has transpired, I refer to as pandemic policy over the past year and a half. And I include in that lockdowns, mask mandates, school closures, and now vaccine passports or vaccine mandates. I think that the problem over the past year and a half I've observed is that I have been consistently told to follow the science by people who do not indeed appear to be following the science, but rather follow following political parties or government leaders who have been proven wrong over and over and over again. And as I've watched these policies be implemented, we've watched serious ramifications come about. We've seen people pushed further into poverty. I think it's an estimate of 150 million people will be pushed into poverty as a result of what we've been doing. We've seen millions of people lose their jobs and their businesses and their homes. We've seen children lose years and years of schooling that those on the margins will never be able to recover. And at the same time, we've pushed many health things aside like cancer screenings, heart operations. As a whole, I believe our response to this disease has actually been worse than the disease itself. And while we've been doing that, we've not been elevating things that actually could help people and make them safer. We've not been going about this in ways that actually could ensure that we can protect people from a pandemic while also upholding their rights, while also upholding our economy. And so I have many problems with how we've gone about this. And my biggest problem of all is feeling gaslit by people like Dr. Fauci and others in government who consistently have been wrong and never come back out and cop to that, never apologize to that, and really very rarely even correct the record. They just keep trying to go back and do the same things they've done in the past that haven't worked. Um, so that's where I'm, I'm differing, I think, with you on this, but I'd love to hear your thoughts too. Absolutely. So let's start with the basics. Do you believe mask decrease the spread of COVID-19? I believe that medical mask decrease the spread of COVID-19. And I believe that we have not been able to get access to those at large. But I have data right in front of me from the NCBI, which is a department of the National Institute of Health that says themselves, cloth masks show minimum efficacy in source control versus medical grade masks. The efficacy of cloth mask filtration varies and depends on the type of material used, number of layers, degree of moisture in the mask and fitting the mask. Cloth face masks have limited efficacy as a whole in combating viral infection transmission. I think it's about 10%. It, it, it helps a little tiny bit, but the cloth mask, which is mostly what we're wearing, is largely security theater. Well, let me tell you the data that I have from the NHL. Um, cloth mask can reduce the spread of COVID-19 because the majority majority of it spreads in droplets by 40 to 60%. The medical mask that you are referring to can decrease the spread of COVID-19 by up to 91%. That is the CDC recommended protocol. If your issue with mask mandates, especially when we talk about mandates in school systems, is the type of mask. Well, you can also mandate that as well, if this is about safety and protocol. What we do agree on based on the data is that a mask decreases the spread of COVID-19. If your percentage model is as low as 10 or is as high as 91%. It sounds like the gap is education as it relates to what kind of mask is the most effective. But when we go to the school systems, because that's what's, uh, that's in the media every day, almost somebody at a school board meeting, Fighting, throwing hands, acting like children, being immature, committing criminal assault, right? Because school boards, we just had one conservative school board unanimously voted to reinstate mask mandates because they have almost 200 staff members, faculty, and students who are no longer there because of COVID exposure, right? So they said, we got to make this decision locally, and they did so, contrary to the sentiment of some of those parents. So here's my next question to you. 
Do you believe that local school boards are unconstitutional when they do require a mask mandate? Or is it within their constitutional or legal authority? Well, first and foremost, I want to say I disagree more heavily when it comes to masking children than I do about the efficacy of masks in the general public. We see over and over that the studies that have been done show no statistical difference between schools that require masks and schools that don't. We see that other first world countries, including the UK, Ireland, all of Scandinavia, France, the Netherlands, Switzerland, and Italy do not mask their school children. And most importantly, there's no evidence of more outbreaks in these schools relative to schools in the US. That is untrue. Let me cite, since you may not be aware of this data. Data, but I want you to I want you to source it when you get a moment. Jackson, Mississippi, they do not follow mask protocols. Uh, the superintendent is a guy named Dr. Stryker. Dr. Stryker's positivity rate of COVID kids is almost at 7%. That's inside of the Jackson, Mississippi school system. They are not enforcing mask requirements whatsoever. There's another school system in LA, the independent school system. They are enforcing not only mask mandates, but also they require that all the school teachers get COVID vaccination. Their positivity rate, and they test every single Friday in that system, is at 0.5%, not even 1%. That is an actual real life example of protocol of mask working to decrease the spread of COVID-19 inside of a controlled environment known as a school system. And you have one that's six times higher than other surrounding schools because they are not enforcing masks. There you have it. I don't know how you can say that that is because of masks. Because again, we have this from the CDC at the end of May. The CDC released a study showing that distancing hybrid models HEPA filters and most notably requiring students wear masks found not to have a statistical significant benefit. We have a study that specifically analyzed name 90,000. Name that study to me, what, what, number one, name that study to me. What's the name of that study you just cited that says it does not work? It is the CDC study released in May that studied the distancing models and masking of kids in elementary schools. So you're saying the CDC is on record for yes. saying that masks do not decrease the spread of COVID. They say they have no statistical significant benefit and they cite a study specifically that they did of 90,000 elementary schools and or sorry, 90,000 elementary students and 169 Georgia schools between November 16th to December 11th, where again, they found there was no statistical significant difference in schools that required masks and those that didn't. And again, there's also studies comparing our schools to all these other first world countries that are not requiring masking. Let me do this, Hannah. I have various studies from the CDC where they cite peer reviewed research where masks do decrease the spread of COVID. So I'm looking at these studies now. I'm not sure what study you're referring to. I'm not saying you're not sourcing a study that they have cited at some point. But I'm telling you that the official conclusion based on the research index of the CDC is that masks decrease the spread of COVID-19. As a matter of fact, on their own website as one of their conclusions from the research, properly worn masks decrease the spread of COVID-19 by up to 90%. So why would the CDC on their website come up with a conclusion in data that's contrary to the research, number one. I'm really two, happy to answer that for you because and, and actually we two, just got the emails today that show why they put that on their website. It's right. because the teachers unions were threatening them to release <laughs> a terrible press release. Okay, it's all right, and number today, two, headlines everywhere. The you teachers still unions have blackmailed actual, them into this. Got you, okay, the CDC was blackmailed by school teachers, got it. So you still, you have an actual real life comparison of, a, of an entire school system who has said, by the direction of Dr. Stryker in Jackson, Mississippi. We will not enforce mask mandates in the school. They are inching to 7%. Hell, it may be closer to 8%, maybe 9% by the end of this week. They are in comparison almost 10 plus times higher than anyone around them. 
So but you're you don't telling think there me there could be other factors for that? Tell me what other factors. Surely there could be other factors. There, we already so, know so you're that gonna there make are a multitude of now. things that actually do prevent COVID mm. that they probably aren't doing because we're looking mm. at Mississippi. Some of those things include a good, healthy diet, being fit and <laughs> weight, being out in the sun, taking Ma'am, vitamin D, having good air filtration, having Ma'am, good ventilation. What study, what study can you cite that says a good, healthy diet? will stop you from spreading COVID-19. Tell me which this study. This has been everywhere. I don't have to pull every study done. No, you can but what Google study? this and find any number of studies what that show study you that over and over and over. We you see cannot that people spread who are COVID-19 fit, because are in good you shape, have a healthy better with diet. COVID. Hmm? Which one? Which study? Which study? Which study says Google if you have it, a healthy diet, pick. You they, cannot this has spread been cited COVID-19. over and over and over again. I'm not coming here with a Google computer to every interview to pull the research. So you're telling me that you. these uh, school children in Jackson, Mississippi, the reason why they have a higher COVID positivity rate is connected to their diet, not the fact that the doctor. I'm not saying uh, this. Not. I'm saying there are a myriad of factors hmm. that contribute to COVID rates, and that okay. you saying that the simple fact that they're not masking is the one reason that they have a higher well, rate. Well, it's not just school. that. It's, it's because not they're not masking. Well, Hannah, it's not just that. It's because they're not masking. He does not enforce social distancing. There is no COVID protocol whatsoever in the school system. And children who test positive for COVID are allowed to still attend the school because he says he puts education over pandemic panic. Okay. That is your and, opinion. That and is now, not a no, 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 ma'am, analysis. ma'am, ma'am. And it doesn't negate the ma'am, fact you that you just again, said it's connected to diet. Is that your opinion or scientific analysis? That is a scientific analysis. And on top of that, <laughs> oh, man, oh, the wow. other scientific analysis That's shows a scientific that again, analysis that the children schools. in Jackson, Mississippi have higher positivity rates in this one school district because of their diet. I am saying that you cannot say one school district has higher rates and this is because of masking. That is an opinion. That is purely an opinion and it does not answer for these myriad of other studies that show that there is no statistical difference, especially between states in the US. You just named a statistical difference in your own data. You said in your own data. I'm quoting this from the CDC. You want to sit here and pick apart the studies instead of looking them up. Ma'am, you said in your own proclamation of the data that it had a 10% effective rate. Now I'm a statistician. Anything over 3% we call statistically significant. So when you say it had a 10% effectiveness based on that data set that you're reading, that is contrary to you saying it is not statistically significant. Anything over three points on a statistical model is statistically significant. It is not statistically significant. That is not the opinion of the scientists who are reporting on this wow. analysis. And again, you cannot sit here and ignore this data that shows that our schools Ma'am, are very worse than schools school that are not masking overseas. How do you explain that? That are being that? hospitalized and having COVID. Um, back to my original question, though. Do you think school boards have the authority within the law, within the Constitution? Do they have the authority to mandate masks? Absolutely not. And there are so many problems that children can have and so many health effects that they can have from this that I think it's kind of crazy people would Mm. even suggest it. First and foremost, there is no end in sight to this. This is something that at this point what you're arguing for is a perpetual masking of school children throughout the rest of their days. There's no end in sight. It just keeps moving, the ball keeps moving. We know that it causes all kinds of issues, possible breathing difficulties. It causes dangers of self-contamination, headaches, development of facial skin lesions, which I've myself experienced by the way from having to wear a mask. Irritant dermatitis, acne, increased contamination due to improper mask disposal. Yeah, the list goes all on. of that is better than COVID-19. So let me ask you That's this question about you. your about your um, statement of the uh, school boards do not have the authority. Uh, where in the Constitution does it prohibit, or where in the law does it prohibit school boards from having a mask mandate? Where is it at? The Constitution isn't structured to give people power, it's instructed to actually pull the government in, rein it in. It tells the government a very set list of what it can do and that is it. Nowhere in there can you find a right for the school board to come in and tell people they have to wear something on their face for the rest of their days in order to access their education. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you some education on that. Uh, Number one, it actually is in the constitution, it's in the 10th amendment. Let me read it to you. Uh, The 10th amendment says power is not delegated to the United States by the constitution. Our left to the state. Ma'am, are left to the uh, states, not the finish, school Madam. county boards. To ma'am, the states. I'm and going when to states make the connection for you. No, you cannot do mask mandates, the and they're trying to override that. That's unconstitutional. Ma'am, I'm going to help you out here, okay? The Tenth Amendment of the Constitution says the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited 
buy it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Now, the reason why school boards can make what's called administrative law is because by statute, they are allowed to create these policies by state law. The reason why state law allows them to create these policies is because the 10th Amendment of the Constitution says if the United States government does not explicitly prohibit it, the power falls back to the state statutorily. So to the state. all of these and madam, the, the state, state granted the school board the authority by statute to make administrative law. So by that virtue, school boards are not adversarial to the constitution or the law. And let me remind you, madam, school boards are the one that mandate all the other vaccinations you must have, tetanus, um, chicken pox, etc. Those are still mandated. As a matter of fact, in Georgia and Florida, you gotta get six mandated vaccinations to go to any K through 12 public school and 92% of private schools. In places like California, they have even more of a mandate for vaccinations based on that protocol. So you don't think school boards have the ability to mandate those vaccinations? Have they been I, breaking the law for decades? I don't, but I have to tell you, it really delights me to hear somebody on the left come to care about the 10th Amendment again, because it's the first time I've heard somebody on the left actually damn right push I care about the 10th Amendment a now, long time. Now, ma'am, back to the original sentiment totally of your- you're not totally incorrect, you're not totally wrong, but- I know I'm not wrong. The 10th Amendment gives the state's power. The state governments, the people who are prohibiting the school boards from setting mass mandates are the state governments. They no. have every authority to do that. The let school me take boards you, only derive their down power another from them. Here. And in fact, I think what you're doing actually is making an excellent case for school choice, where families should be able All to right. get their tax dollars and take it and run and go get their own schooling. Because right now, the teachers unions continue to keep schools shut down for arbitrary reasons because they're trying to push through their pet policies. Mm -hmm. We're seeing that kids continue to fall behind. We are continuing to see them lose their bodily autonomy in our school system, which I think okay. is corrupt and disgusting. I don't think the government ever has a right to tell you what to put in your body, and it can't tell you what not to put in your body. If if you're against the war on drugs, you should be against vaccine mandates. It is not okay. It leads to very right. terrible so I'm not talking about, when you empower um, them this way. So madam, there is no vaccine mandate federally for all general citizens. But let me go back to what you said about state law. You're incorrect about state law. State law is not what's prohibiting schools from mandating masks. These are executive orders outside of statutory formation. As a matter of fact, a judge in Florida, ruled just a few days ago that the order of DeSantis, the executive order of DeSantis was, and I quote, outside of his legal authority. Now statutorily, the state legislature can pass a law limiting the actual authority of the school boards. They can do that because school boards operate by statute of the state. Now you ma'am, being I think close to libertarian should appreciate the fact that in order to take power away from an established government, you must enact a statute and not an executive order, which the judge has already said you cannot change this statutory law based on the executive action of a governor. How do you not agree with that judge? I don't disagree with that. I'm not in favor of executive orders on hardly anything for the president or the governors. But we've also seen this pass at the legislative level and what happens? The ACLU comes in and sues, people on the left come in and push back. They still don't respect that authority. So this is something where I don't think people are being consistent. If you want it passed through the state legislature, I'm fine with that. I think much, almost everything should go through the legislature okay. in this country. That's a huge problem that we have. But let's not pretend like that when that does happen, that people are letting it rest with that. They're not. They're still All trying right. to fight back. They're still trying to come in and force these kids to wear masks. We even saw a teacher taping mask on one kid's face in one of these states recently. Well, and listen, that's inappropriate. I'm a former school teacher. I would never tape anything to a child. If you're in violation of policy, you're in violation of policy. But let's be very clear. Um, school boards, they have the authority based on statute to mandate vaccinations before entrance. They have the authority to mandate teachers have certain credentials before they can teach or be certified. They have the authority to enforce a dress code and they have the authority to say you gotta wear a mask, you gotta wear shoes, you, you gotta wear um, dresses that are longer than this. They, they have the authority to do this is my point and they have uh, the administrative law to support it. Uh, let me remind people of a few things because at these school boards, there's a lot of argumentation. And you would think based on the reporting that the majority of these parents are against mask mandates. Here's the data, 64% of parents 
are actually for their local government mandating masks in public places. That figure just came out not too long ago. It's printed in Forbes and you have um, some other data sets. I'll break out a few of them. Um, 70 to 75% of parents support mask mandates for students, teachers and staff, okay? Another data set shows that 77%, this is the highest number out of the data set. They are against any Republican policy that would defund local governments or local school systems because they are contrary to the mask ban, okay? So you literally have the majority of parents are actually for mask mandates, the majority of school teachers are for mask mandates. The majority of these local communities are for mask mandates. And the majority, even the majority of Republicans, 58% of Republicans are against defunding schools over the mask mandate issue. Why is it that the minority is still winning the conversation here? Well, because I think people have an individual choice. If you want to put a mask on your kid, nobody is prohibiting you. You're free to do that. You're well, let's absolutely say that about within your rights. What if a child, what if a parent says, I don't want my child to get these required vaccinations. They need to still go to this school. What do you say to that? I think all families, and this is my personal opinion long before COVID, should be able to take their tax dollars and use it towards whatever school they want. I think our Department of Education is garbage. I think we have kids stuck in racist school zones where they get disparate treatment. I think that as a whole, families should get those dollars. We should fund students, we shouldn't fund these systems. If they're any good, people will choose to utilize them. If they're not, let the kids get out and have a better shot. All right, at a better so future. you agree with me that defunding and 77% of conservatives, I agree with 77% of conservatives and 92% of Democrats. And it sounds like you may agree with, with them as well, that defunding school systems because of a mask mandate <coughs> argument is not proper for our children. We agree on I that. I don't really know what you mean by defund. I'm talking about education savings accounts, which is well, a long okay, time I policy understand it, proposal. But you, you correlate funding to education. So my point is, if you are in the middle of a court battle about mask mandates, and the governor says, or the commission of education says, we're now going to find you. We're going to take away money from you every month from this school system. That is a no, no, right? Mm. Is it or should it be? <laughs> well, the judge said that the governor did not have the legal authority to do so through executive action, which really left it open to say that statutorily you probably can. But I don't think it should be the right thing to do. One of the rare places where Democrats and Republicans actually agree. Listen, my producers are telling me I'm out of time, but we will debate that issue next time because that's a whole different rabbit hole. All right. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. All right. I appreciate your time. Thank you for coming. Good to see you again. Indisputable. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, remember. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and take care of the planet. Remember, the truth is always indisputable.